Indianapolis is an incredible city in the heart of the country. In fact, the idea of starting this channel actually came to me when visiting Indianapolis, so it's safe to say that Indy was one of the primary inspirations behind creating these city overviews. In this series, I briefly cover a city's history, population, skyline, as well as a few things that make the city unique. Now, let's meet Indy. I always like to start by exploring how city wound up being where it is today. Indianapolis is unique in that it didn't just originate organically because of its geographic location, but instead was planned out as the state capital before it was even settled. The early inhabitants of the area were the Delaware tribe, but they left in 1821 after the Treaty of St. Mary's. In the same year, the city was designed and platted out by Alexander Ralston, who had previously helped to design Washington, D.C. The circle in the very center of the city is where the Soldiers and Sailors Monument stands today, which I'll talk more about in a minute. Although the city didn't begin organically, it did experience tremendous growth thanks to its location as the first national highway, the Cumberland Road, was routed through it and the city eventually became the second largest rail center in the country. In the 1920s, the city became known as the Crossroads of America because of the number of major highways that intersected near the city. Today, Indianapolis has a population of about 900,000, making it the 16th largest city in the country and third largest in the Midwest. It's also one of the largest cities in the country not located on a navigable body of water. If you've seen many of my other videos, you'll know that I think metro population is more indicative of a city's true size, and Indianapolis has a metro population of 2.1 million. This makes it the 33rd largest city, coming in between Columbus and Cleveland when measuring by metropolitan statistical area. Some of the most recognizable companies headquartered in Indy include Angie's List, Simon Property Group, which probably owns a shopping mall near you, and Eli Lilly. The Indianapolis Metro is home to several colleges and universities, including Butler University. Call me shallow, but when it comes to cities, I think appearances matter, which is why evaluating a city's skyline is my favorite part of making these videos. Indy's skyline isn't anything flashy, but I would still consider it a solid looking skyline. If I were to rate the skyline out of 10 stars, I'd probably give it a rating of 7. I like Indy's skyline thanks in large part to the Salesforce Tower. The Salesforce Tower is 811 feet tall, making it the third tallest building in the Midwest outside of Chicago. If you took the average height of the tallest five buildings in Indy, it would be ranked as the 27th tallest skyline in the country, just behind Tampa and just ahead of Kansas City. Earlier I had mentioned the Soldiers and Sailors Monument, which sits in the very center of the city. This monument is a symbol of the city and stands 284 feet tall, which is only 21 feet shorter than the Statue of Liberty in New York. The monument was completed in 1901 and is the first in the country to be dedicated to the common soldier. The top of the memorial is a statue symbolizing victory, and below her feet is an observation deck. It's an incredible monument, and Indianapolis is second only to Washington DC for its number of veteran monuments. The Soldiers and Sailors Monument is part of the Indiana War Memorial Plaza Historical District. This district is 24 acres and includes a host of monuments as well as a couple museums, including the Indiana War Memorial and Museum. The memorial was modeled after one of the wonders of the ancient world, the Mausoleum of Halicarnassus, which is the kind of fact that I personally really geek out over. Indianapolis is home to the largest children's museum in the world. This massive museum is nearly half a million square feet in size. It has five floors of exhibit halls that primarily focus on interactive learning for children. Some of the highlights of the museum include a steam locomotive, a simulated dinosaur habitat, and the 43-foot-tall fireworks of glass sculpture. In downtown Indy is one of the best urban canal or river walks in the country in my opinion. It's not on the level of San Antonio's river walk, but I think Indy's canal walk really levels up the downtown. I love the fact that the water nearly comes up to the level of the sidewalk, and that there are no barriers between that and the canal. Small boats and kayaks can be taken up and down the canal, and there are also several species of turtles living in the urban section of the canal. Perhaps the thing that Indianapolis is most famous for is for hosting the world's largest single-day sporting event in the world, the Indianapolis 500. 
It is typically held over Memorial Day weekend. The seating capacity is 250,000, making it the largest sporting facility by capacity. That's more than double the seating capacity of the big house at the University of Michigan. The Indy track used to be known as the Brickyard because the track used to be paved in brick and today there's still a yard long strip of bricks kept at the finish line. When it comes to sports, I'm primarily a football fan, so I have to mention that Indy has been home to the annual NFL Combine since 1987. The Combine is held at Lucas Oil Field and is meant to put potential top draft prospects through several measurable physical and mental tests to give NFL scouts a better assessment of their abilities on the football field. The event has grown so much in popularity that it is now televised and receives millions of viewers a year. And lastly, there is a park in Indy that has an interesting relic of New York City in it. Holiday Park is home to the remains of an artistic facade of a demolished New York skyscraper. The remains today are known as the Ruins, and include three large statues that a century ago were literally looking down at Broadway. Well that wraps up my video about Indianapolis. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like and check out some of my other videos about cities. Thanks for watching.